Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Last time we took on Crash Awake and reduced the man to nothing more than a puddle. So we're gonna leave the gym as I run into the wall. Hopefully, it's just a single lap around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. So that was exciting, wasn't it? That gym's a little bit uneventful, unfortunately, just because of it being a little bit easier. There are a lot of counters to Water-type Pokemon, and the game hands you some pretty good ones early. So it does make sense that taking on that gym, you might not have too much difficulty, especially if you chose Turtwig as your starter, then you can breeze through it with Torterra, or if you don't have one at the time, Grotal, Squirtle. So, now that we're outside of the gym, this suspicious fellow, let's talk to him again. Deliver a package to the lake, huh? Well, that's weird. Oh, seems we've been eavesdropping. I talk to myself a lot too. Can totally understand. We're not supposed to follow them. Well, it's funny you should say that because it's exactly what we're going to do. But first... Go ahead and swap out our team a little bit. Some of the Pokemon that we had previously are getting a little over-leveled, so we want to have a chance to make things a little bit more fair. Let's see. Well, <laughs> now that I look at it, it's not... Level disparity isn't too bad, but maybe the Pokemon that we did bring through most of that gym battle can take a seat for now. We'll put Miguel down just because of it being easy, and where on, where, in Arceus sake, is uh, Sharon? There she is next to my combi that I randomly got. Let's bring Sharon in so we can have some fighting type distribution. Nope, that's flying type, that's a bird. That is a government drone, and I do not know what my types are. So let's go ahead and get the H out of Pastoria City. Looks like the grunt didn't quite make it to the halfway point. Talking about their boss's ideal world. Sounds like somebody's a bit of a bootlicker here. But, you know who is it? It's Barry! Barry's definitely gonna plow into us. Definitely from behind. As he does. Time for a rival fight, everybody. Ooh! We like these. Get to hear more of Barry's music. You know what else we like? Liking, commenting, and subscribing. Watching these D Mike Plays videos, it's a ton of fun. I can attest to it myself. I have personal experience, so if you do that, I'd be very happy with you. Very pleased. I don't really have anything that's good against a Starly, unfortunately, because everything I had before, I swapped out, because I am awesome. I do have the ability, now that I have Fly, Gonna eventually make a trip back to Veilstone and beef up my team with some TMs, but we're not gonna get there quite yet. Also, we're at this point where we're talking mid 20s to early 30s being the the distribution of levels. What in the H is Barry doing? Still having a Starlet? Like, come on, that's a one-hit kill. Not even an effective attack. You can do better. Expect more. He does have a Primplup, though. That's the evolution of Piplup. And we will bring in Sharon. She hasn't really had a lot of time on screen, so we'll do that. I'm gonna still try to keep mixing the team up. I haven't fully decided who I want on the team as the final six, but I will still be adding new members from time to time as I do. Sometimes I just like to to goof around in the in the underground. And in the process, I might find Pokemon that I think are interesting. Oh wow, I was not expecting that. So Sharon needs a little bit of help. She is under leveled enough that that was a big old boo-boo. So we don't like that, not a fan of that. We'll go ahead and use Dimitri for a moment. Dimitri's kind of beefy for a balloon. Full of hot air. And I'm gonna go ahead, do I have any regular revives? I don't. Well, that's fine, I don't care. I have an infinite amount of money, basically, as we play through this game. 
I don't really buy stuff very often, so it's fine. Hopefully we can withstand such a disastrous bubble beam. That does a lot. I was not expecting that. Sprintblub must have a pretty high special attack stat. And somehow we are faster than it. I always thought Driftblum was kind of a, a slow Pokemon, just kind of a tank, but maybe I'm wrong. I'd have to look at the stats. But I definitely want to make sure that the team is in fighting shape. I want everybody to get some experience. Especially the ones that are a little bit falling behind. That's on, on purpose, though. I'm trying to swap the team in, and I think I've got about 10 regulars right now that could potentially make the final squad, depending upon how I'm feeling. But yeah, see, if I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have gotten a thousand experience for Sharon, and that would be disappointing. So I'm glad I was able to do that. To make sure you learn self-destruct, nah, you know, not a big fan of blowing my balloon up. We will avoid that for now. And Barry has a Ponyta. Most of my team is actually pretty weak against that, so let's use a... Uh... No, let's use Buster. Buster hasn't gotten a lot of time on screen. Floatzel was the ace Pokemon of Crash or Wake, but you saw how well that went against Steven. NBD. Ponyta are pretty cool. Playing through this game, if you didn't choose Chimchar, Ponyta is basically your early choice for a fire type, although, as you've seen me swipe around the box a little bit, I was traded a Hound Doom, so it is possible to get a fire type that way, which makes me kind of sad that Hound Doom as a Pokemon was something that was so tough to get when you played through Gold and Silver. You can't even get a Houndor until you're all the way to Gold, or not Golden Ron, to Celadon when you. Also, I like that we just fired a nice beam out, an ice beam out of our beehole. But anyway, it makes me sad that you couldn't get a Houndor until you were all the way to Celadon after you had already finished the original part of the game, before you moved to Kanto. So it just kind of invalidates it a little bit, in my opinion. Barry is very content to get a complete cheeks clapping right now. I don't feel bad about it. But yeah, for such a cool Pokemon, Houndor and Houndoom are two of my favorites. You don't get access to them. And then, you know, they did improve their stats and move pools as time went on, but in those games, they just weren't great. Dark types weren't really fleshed out enough. Not as much as this beatdown of Barry. Beatdown Barry as he plows us from behind. And Craig's evolving, heck yes. Starting out the episode on a high note, our Cranidos is growing up before our eyes. Beautiful, and what do we have now? Oh, that sprite is not great. That is not great, that looks very doofy. Oh man, what have they done to my boy Rampardos? The headbutt Pokemon. It's a powerful headbutt, has enough force to shatter even the most durable things, like my heart. Upon impact, he wants to lose, learn the move Endeavor, which is this move cuts down the target's HP. That's no, that's horrible. We will not. I also should have looked at its stats because I wanted to, sh to share what happened, but Barry's encouraging us to ch chase down terrorists and can identify bad guys. So clearly, Barry has a big heart. Nice conscience. Let's go ahead and take a look now at Craig's stats. Holy moly, look at that attack stat. So I believe Rampardos has one of the highest attack stats, at least from a base level, of any of the Pokemon in the entire series. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use it on my team. The only downside is that I don't really have any good moves for it yet. So we'll get there. It's still early. You know, we're still in the first third of levels. Although, playing through these games, Unless you really, really want to go and grind, which I like grinding, but not in games. You're going to have to accept the fact that your highest levels are probably going to be in like the, I don't know, I want to say like the 50-ish range. I think that, that sounds kind of fair. Also, let's go ahead and walk together with Buster. You'd also think that it'd be bigger, but also look how adorable it is. Watching Buster's cute little otter self run behind us. Don't we? Don't you love that? If you don't love that, you can get the heck out. So we gotta chase after that 
grunt. Oh, there's an item here I missed. Let's grab this real quick. I love the design of forcing HMs to be used by Pokemon, not our own. They did like writable Pokemon and they had like different ways of doing it in other games, but I think that the way that they do it in this one is the best in my opinion. So apparently some energy is being used to make this, in quotes, whatever this is. So this grunt, still content with walking away. I also love that the way that they, they program the pathing for the various Pokemon slash trainers in this game. How they have to turn first, like they couldn't have just had them naturally walk away. I mean, like I can walk in all eight directions. I can do a little whoop, 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 whoop. But for some reason, they can't do that. They have to do it their own specific way. It just looks very silly. This grunt's getting goosebumps. I used to love reading those. R.L. Stein was the man. So this, this grunt is pooped, but not too pooped to run away. Too pooped to battle. So let's give chase to right here. <laughs> okay, that'll do it. So we can finally get him to battle us. I still, I love the galactic grunt theme. We're very close to the Valor Lake front, so apparently something is being taken there. Something with the energy of the universe. This is not a good matchup for us. I think Buster has a fighting move. We'll switch out. And we're still wearing our platinum gear. Platinum style, because we are classy AF, as the kids say. We're looking pretty great. And we just picked up Aerial Ace, so we can teach that to one of our Pokemon. It's a pretty great flying move. It never misses, just like me with my commentary. So that's high quality for you at DMike Industries. Guarantee high quality products. I like Buster. He's fast, hits hard, doesn't take no guff from anybody. <laughs> kind of have him waddle away. That's nice. Okay, so let's continue to head and oh. The scientists that were blocking the lake are still here and surprise, surprise, it's Cynthia. She wants to see how filled up we are. We definitely were after Barry Plotus from behind. Our Pokedex is ever grander. And apparently there's some history about this lake with a mysterious Pokemon. Ooh. Yes, we have seen those Psyduck right outside Cafe Cabin, Cabin Cafe. That's right. Use the medicine on the Psyducks. Give them that, give them that secret medicine. Give them that good, sweet medicine. It'd be kind of interesting to play a Pokemon game where the main character was Cynthia. You don't really learn a ton about her, at least not in this game, so. And she's just like, bye. See ya! So, because I don't really have the patience to walk all the way back up there, I don't know if we can fly somewhere close. But we want to go here, where the flag is. So yes, we go to Salat... Solakian? Salatian Town, and there's the evolution of Sharon. That's a Staraptor. Thanks for the ride, bud. And I hit the right buttons for once. I am proud. So here we go. Let's go on a little bike ride. Just north. And see these willful Psyduck with their need for drugs. So let's give them that secret medicine and see if we can get them out of the way. We cured them of their, quote, chronic headaches. Hmm. That one's a little lost. Imagine that being something I would do. But hey, look, it's Cynthia again. You know, we had to deliver this medicine. She couldn't have done this. Only us. So one favor for her. Now we're going to be apparently becoming her parcel service. We are the delivery for Cynthia. Does not pay well enough. 
but she mentions there being some rare Pokemon. So we're gonna give this old charm to her grandma. Great. So Celestic Town is kind of the the lore center of this game. So we'll be making our way over there, making our way downtown. And apparently there are some rare Pokemon on the way, she says. I don't know if I believe that. We'll see what we get. First step into the grass. This is not intentional. It's a Ponyta, the rare Ponyta. We have not seen one yet in this Let's Play in no capacity. So that's cool. But yeah, the levels of our Pokemon are a little bit on the higher side. So swapping them out does give us the chance to keep the levels artificially lower. I don't know if there are trainers in this grass. Oh, a Ponyta. That's a rare Pokemon. We've never seen that in this Let's Play. Not at all. Not in any capacity. I'm actually going to use a one of the Super Repels. I bought a bunch, so I might as well heck and use them. Let's see what we got. Okay. So we'll reach into our sack and use... We've got a big root. You bet we do. Let's go ahead and sort our items by name. Alphabetical... We'll use the repels we have before we use the super repels, just because I don't want to be wasteful. I don't know if there's any trainers here, but I'm just going to wander around for a moment to see if I can fight somebody. There we go. I thought I saw your goofy little head. There's a ninja trio. So we fought the karate quad, and then we're going to fight the ninja trio. I enjoy watching shows about ninjas and karates. That's fun, right? Remember that being the thing that I wanted to try as a kid, and then I realized that as an adult, that's not something that's fun. So, yes. Martial arts are cool, though. I endorse them as a physical activity, as a way to harness the mind, body, and soul. And you have to wear pajamas while you're doing it. So who doesn't love that? I'm wearing pajamas right now. Who doesn't like a nice PJ? Along with a nice PB and J. You could have a delicious treat while you're sitting in the comfiest of clothes. It did take me a while to get to that point in my life where I realized that comfort is king above all else. There would be times when I would just be relaxing at home, wearing jeans in bed. And now that I think about that, that's a crazy thing to do. I still do it because I am crazy, crazy about making great content for all use. But yes. It's just nice to come home from a long day at the old office. Jump into your PJs. Who doesn't love that? So there's one of the ninja trios. His headband is almost dragging on the ground. I love that. That's a great aesthetic. So you'll see these little... Ooh, hyper potion. I, I think that might be our first one. There's these little lumps in the grass, I think. We can fight these guys. We'll take down all three of them. So we discovered him. Only a ninja could discover another ninja, clearly. That's basically how the rules work. So this is Ninja Boy Bruce. Not really indicative of like ninja Pokemon. I was hoping one of them would have like a Sneasel or something like a fighting type, I don't know. We'll go ahead and swap out. Let's give our brand new Rampardos, Craig, some time to shine. We know Craig can do it. It's very goofy sprite. Who doesn't want to have a dinosaur on their team, though? Come on. It's always funny when you've got the opposing Pokemon just absolutely ready to queue up something to take you out. And then you're like, heck no. That is a very powerful headbutt, though. We love using our head. We're very good at it. And we're just getting level ups left and right. Look at this. Everybody's just coming along. Sharon. Samuel. See, there we go. We don't even need to use the TM for Aerial Ace because Sharon's going to use it. It's the same power as Wing Attack, but we do have some moves that I don't really foresee myself using. So let's go ahead and get rid of Growl. It's a little redundant to have Wing Attack and Aerial Ace, but one of those two will fall off eventually. Probably Wing Attack. Having the priority move is just nice. Never misses. Also, what's with their hair? It's very strange looking. Okay. I'm not here to 
dunk on people's hairstyles. Actually, I mean, I am, but... Now, where is that third ninja boy? There he is! I see his goofy little floppy head poking out from the shadows. I love how they kind of jump out. There was a little spot in Ruby and Sapphire when you're heading down through some tall grass. Like, really tall grass. It's, like, taller than the, the player's head. And there were enemies hidden in there. And then there were also spots where you would be going through, like, the, the volcano area where there were... You could collect ash and trade that for flutes because that's fun. And there were also hidden trainers in that area. That game really prioritized hiding trainers. I don't know why they thought that, that was, like, a super fun thing to do, but it was... There were multiple opportunities for you to for you to do that. So here we go. Let's do a uh, let's do the old mirror match. That's fun. Do we like that? Do we like mirror matches? So we got Scarlet against Skarupi. Skarupi is definitely a cool Pokemon in this game. The evolution is even cooler. I'm a pretty big fan of it. That was not very effective. Well, they know Toxic Spikes. That's a way cooler move than what we know. I should have used my heart scale on that. I'll have to see if I can get some more. Scarlet doesn't really have a very good repertoire, unfortunately. Fell Stinger? What on earth are these moves? I don't even know what that does. I've never even seen that move in my entire life. Let's show this Skarupi our scary face. Ooh, look at that. Now we'll be so fast. Yeah, th their moves, like their move set, is completely different from mine. I'm not entirely sure if I just got the short end of the stick here with Scarlet, but we are a lot faster. We should be anyway because we have a higher level. And I believe that Toxic Spike move is kind of like a Stealth Rock or a Spikes move, where if you swap out, that it will cause damage and also poison the Pokemon that you swap into next. So it's kind of a jerk thing to do. But it wasn't a big move, move, not a problem, especially not for us facing Ninja Boy Brennan. Brennan, Bruce, Fabian, Fabian. Those are choices. Just think about the fact that you have to, like, call your kid that. Okay. Apologies to anybody who has named that. Your name is beautiful, and I'm sure you are too. Great. So moving on, we're going to continue north to Celestic Town, as we were asked. Ooh, here we go. This is the part of the game where we were told about this. So let's go ahead and use Defog. Now imagine the fact that in the original Diamond and Pearl, you had to use a move slot for that. Yeah. So and it, it, I don't remember exactly what the move does. I want to say it's something that's kind of akin to... Like improves your accuracy maybe or something. I don't know. I care so little that I didn't really register it in my brain. Okay, so that guy just told us exactly what we already know. Oh look, it's the fourth ninja kid! So they lied. The ninja trio is the ninja quartet. Isn't that something? Ninja boy Joel, maybe he can sing us a song on his fancy pants piano. The piano man. But yeah, defog. I don't remember if it was a point in this game being used this early. I don't know if it's because they give it to you sooner. I feel like you got Defog a lot later in the game, and maybe this is just a way to introduce it to players to get them accustomed to it. I mean, it's not like you really needed a ton. It's not like Flash, where in order to have that, you actually physically have to have the Pokemon know it, which is a strange one-off that they decided to keep every single HM as a helper move that you can use with your Pokecatch, but not Flash. Maybe they wanted us to know just how special Flash is. Also, I thought Skarupi was a bug type and would be affected by Ice Beam more than that, but apparently not. But it doesn't matter because it's dead. It's gone. So this is going swimmingly. We have a, a rush of success here. But yeah, we're, it doesn't it doesn't help having that experience all because like it it's kind of cheesing it. Like I'm doing my best to hold off on having my Pokemon leveled. I don't do anything more than what I'm being given 
with the Pokemon. I don't train. I don't grind. I don't do anything like that. It's just the trainers that I'm fighting. I will fight all of them because I want to complete the Sinnoh decks. And in order to complete the Sinnoh decks, you do have to do that. But in general, not going out of my way. Ooh, this is going to hurt. Or not. Man, I didn't realize that Samuel was such a thick boy. And then use our ancient power on this heckin' Golbat. I love Golbat, by the way. It's huge mouth. It's old sprites from red and blue were so goofy looking. And then they made it even better when they evolved it in gold and silver to Crobat. Crobat's a great Pokemon. If you don't like Crobat, you can get the heck out. You can flap your jaws as much as you want, but I won't agree with you. So there we go. More level ups for everybody. You get a level up, you get a level up, and you at home get a level up in my heart. Okay, so there's another honey tree if you want to slather your bark with that honey. Up to you. I'm gonna be using lots of HMs in this in this episode. Okay, that was pointless. I think this is probably a battle. It is. You can't escape them, everybody. It's time to wreck this person's composure. There's a lot of a lot of points in this game where to get from point A to point B, you apparently have to fight everybody that lives there. They just see that we're coming, they're like, alright, well, cracking some knuckles. It's time to go to work. There's a lot of trainer battles, and it doesn't make it any easier for the point that I was trying to make earlier. That as I play through these games, I'm not going out of my way to get levels. I'm not trying to inflate the overall team. I mean, it's probably made that way to help people that are kind of new to the game and to give them an easier experience. The experience all is also present in Arceus Legends, which is kind of ridiculous. You can basically get experience for doing anything, whether that be catching Pokemon, fighting Pokemon, knocking berries out of trees, just existing, having a good time, turning the game on, being too cute. You can you can get experience for everything. But yes, here's Grotal, Squirtle. You start with Turtwig, you're going to have a Grotal at some point. It's kind of a goofy looking tweener Pokemon. Would be a great choice to fight Crash or Wake. Not against that Gyarados. Floatzel and that Quag... Sire, I'm like Quagmire. Quagsire, you'd have a good time, but that's basically about it. Okay, these people are very aggressively running around. Let's swap out. I think this is going to be a double battle. So let's go ahead and get Craig in there. And Sharon. I have Pokemon on my team, though, that like I'm not trying to level up. On purpose. I mean, I like. I guess I technically am because I'm playing this game. But my overall goal is to just get them better moves. Because I don't care what level they are. I would actually prefer them to be under leveled, as a bit of a challenge. While we fight out these fight these people with, with their jumpsuits. But yeah, I, I would prefer them to. Oh, this is gonna be rough. I would prefer them to not be higher leveled. Also, that Gyarados. There is no way that it is that small. I think I've seen stuff in the past where they show Gyarados as a walk behind Pokemon and it's like just a little bit bigger than the trainer. Also, that took so long. Oh my gosh. Does everybody need to have a a nature or whatever that's called? An ability that, that does this heckin' crap? Okay. Let's swap back out to Samuel. I don't think Sharon's a good choice. It's gonna get nuked by that Raichu. I don't want that. Plus, we need to show off our ancient power. Okay. I always remember looking back at the, t at the television show when I was a kid, and... Oh, I forgot that Samuel had Storm Drain, so that's nice. We got a little bit of a boost. That's actually really helpful, especially considering the circumstances. But I remember watching the, the show as a child, and obviously the show does take when I say some liberties, I should say a lot of liberties with how Pokemon is actually played and how it operates. But I do remember how there's an episode once where Ash is fighting a Rhydon and he recommends that his Pikachu attack its horn. So, that works, right? You know, that's, that's totally in, in play. The show definitely played by its own rules. Probably still does, I haven't seen it in, in eons, I guess. I really only paid attention to the show 
in the first season, maybe through like the Orange Islands episodes, those ones were a little rough. Just because by that point, I feel like they were just kind of grasping for straws and trying to keep the show somewhat watchable before they moved on to the gold and silver episodes. And I have no idea what Pokemon, Pokemon Johto was like. I didn't watch that. Which is weird because I really loved the game. Gold and silver are my favorite, but I just never really paid attention to the show at that point. Maybe I had outgrown it. I think the reality of my situation is that I hadn't watched it because I was uh, all on the Dragon Ball Z train. I believe that's what it was. Okay, so here we go. So we have Muddy Water. It's not the most accurate of moves, but for Samuel, it could be pretty good. It is quite a bit stronger than Water Pulse. You lose some PP, your PP gets a little bit smaller, and you confuse people. You confuse people with your small PP. Oh no, well that's what we would have done with Water Pulse, but we get stronger now. Our small PP makes us stronger. So Jen and Zack, no problem with their jumpsuits and fanny packs, and we got a lot of money from that. So if you can use the thing that lets you refight people, maybe come back with your amulet coin, there's a lot of ace trainers here that we're getting trapped by. If you saw all those rocks to the right, that's for rock climb. We don't have that yet. There's quite a few spots that you're actually going to have to come back and explore. So let's go ahead and fight this ace trainer with its Mothum. Mothum is the evolution of Burmy. So if you don't get Wormadam, you got a male Burmy. This is what you get. Let's go ahead and use that Hyper Potion we got to heal Craig. Trying to conserve my Moo Moo Mulks. Don't want to burn through those too fast. So Craig is back in fighting shape. I would love Craig to have a rock type move. Rock polish is cool, but being faster doesn't really do much considering that Craig is pretty, whoa. That was a nice thing. There's some, some types of buffs in this game where the, the things that they buff, it's like, like six, seven things. I think Ancient Power can do that. If you, yeah, your defensive upgrade did nothing. We're too strong. If you have Ancient Power, I think it has a small chance to like increase all your stats, which I think is kind of ridiculous. But hey, whatever, we'll take it. So the only person on our team right now that's kind of fallen behind a bit is Sharon. We'll have people probably in the 32 to 33 range, almost the entire team by the end of this episode. We might actually have to swap midway through just to keep things fair. But see, like, Buster has a good move set. Got dark move, fighting. Oh, come on. Does that have sturdy? Shouldn't have, it should not have survived that. But anyway, yeah, we've got a good mix of moves. We could pretty much live with this as the move set going forward for the rest of the game, and I'd be pretty happy. All those moves are really strong. Maybe a beefed up water move like Surf or something would be nice. But in general, all the rest of those are pretty nice. Pretty big fan. I like it. I just like to have the diversity. I like to have the diversity of the team. I like to have the diversity of the moves. I like diversity in my friendship, in my hobbies and activities. Diversity is important, folks. And if you don't like diversity, well, I don't like you. Gotta have a diverse palate when you eat food. I say that. I basically eat the same like four or five things. So that's one thing that I don't have diversity on. I need to do better. Gotta eat your fruits and veggies, folks. I would love to eat more fruit. However, the one downside for me in fruit is that I don't like sweet food. And most fruit is pretty sweet. There are exceptions, obviously. There are fruits that are kind of more on the sour side, but there's not really savory fruit. You know, if I could have fruit that would taste like a nice sirloin steak, have fruit that tastes like some chicken wings, I'd love that. I'm sure that there are ways to make fruit and vegetables into unrecognizable things. I know cauliflower is kind of all the rage now as a food that people use to concoct into whatever. Okay, so it looks like these are like little, oh, little bike railings. That would be terrifying to ride on, by the way, unless there's like little grips that would pop down onto the rail, you know, grip that rail nice and tight so you don't fall off. That is kind of harrowing, I would say. And it does appear like this is going to be a pretty heckin' long episode, so I apologize for those of you who are waiting for something brief, because you ain't getting it. 
Thankfully though, most of most, most Super Nintendo Sundays and Donkey Kong so far have been relatively brief. Those, those elements and those episodes of those games aren't really too robust. I try to keep them shorter for just a little, a little, little snack on the weekends. All my viewers are snacks, I know that. Snack with two Ks. You guys are great. Okay, Floatzel, if you get out of the way. Excuse me, Buster. Buster Rhymes. Yeah, there's just... This little area is just very robust with all that's over. Ooh, that's a good thing to come out of your way to get. Shadow Ball is one of the premier ghost moves that came out in, I believe, Gold and Silver. It's a great move. I love using it. Dimitri has it, and it's wonderful. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up these last few trainers here. These episodes just go on for a while because of how many there are before you can get to the next place. The game is not messing around. You're going to fight everybody. So you can't really avoid having weaker members on your team. I guess the only other way that you could get around it is just to constantly be swapping your Pokemon out. That's literally the only the only alternative I can imagine that would make sense. Constantly be catching new Pokemon, constantly be switching your team around. I'm assuming that's what they want. I haven't popped into the underground in a while, but as you as you get gym badges, I think that the underground Pokemon scale, so I'm a little scared of that. I remember how crazy it was that I was able to... Using low sweep on a bird makes no sense. But I remember how crazy it was when I went into the underground and I'm facing like level 35 hound dooms when I the most highly leveled Pokemon on my team was like 15? 20? So I imagine that the underground scales to keep things fresh. Namaste, Black Belt Adam. No, I'm Nama Nama not stay. Nama go. Also, I'm not sure why my poke catch is open. That's so embarrassing. Walking around with your poke catch out, oof. But I also think it's strange, is like it seems like such a high utility thing to have as I guess technology. You know, I guess it's kind of akin to a wristwatch the way that they have it. I don't remember if it was like that in the original Diamond and Pearl. Or if it was treated kind of like a peripheral. Like, you know, there's plenty of people that I'm sure you know that have an Apple Watch. But, you know. I guess you could think of it like that. I guess not everybody does have that sort of technology. I myself, not a fan of having things on my wrists. I like my wrists to be free. They deserve their freedom. But yeah, it's like, these fights are just so... Like, that was a critical hit. I know Absorb isn't a strong move. But we're at the point, too, where, like, in most of these fights, these Pokemon just cannot do any damage to me. The only times that it's kind of, I guess, harrowing in these fights are when I'm doing the gym battles and I intentionally make it hard on myself. So I guess that is a way to artificially make the game harder. And I would like to do that more, but the downside of only having three Pokemon that you carry along at any time is that you're going to have them get more experience and potentially be over leveled okay well buster yes so you can get out of my way okay wonderful glad to know it so there's a smoke ball i think that gets you out of a battle like a polka doll does okay we're just going to go ahead and push bart out of the way i think this is a bird keeper they kind of have hair like barry they had kids i wonder what they would look like Probably have crazy hairdos. I actually really like her hair. That's pretty neat. It almost looks like kind of the hair of a perugly. I don't know if I would call that a hairstyle. What do you call that with like pets when they have hair? Do they have hairdos? I mean, they just exist, right? Is a hairdo a choice? I'm not entirely sure how that works. Now I do like Hoot Hoot. That was one of the original Pokemon from gold and silver. Anytime that I'm going to see a gold and silver Pokemon, you can bet your bottom 
then I'm going to talk about it because I love them. They're definitely my favorite. It's my favorite of the genres. I'm never going to stop talking about it. I'm hoping that at some point that Game Freak, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Maybe it won't. But I think it'd be cool. Okay, I have no idea what this move does. Great. There's a lot of moves that I don't know what they do. Well, we can get our first look at Muddy Water. He looks like poo. That's kind of gross. Pretty effective, though. Nice and strong. But I'm hoping that eventually they made a Pokemon Let's Go, like the Eevee and Pikachu games. Those were pretty fun. Although the catching Pokemon thing was a little strange. I'm hoping that maybe they'll do a, a Pokemon Let's Go Gold and Silver. I know that we got Heart Gold and, and Soul Silver not too long ago, and those games were both excellent. But I think it'd be kind of fun to to revisit Gold and Silver. Get us something, some HD Gold and Silver, because as good as Heart Gold and Soul Silver were, those games were very slow and kind of hard to play. They're still, in my opinion, the two best Pokemon games that have ever been made. That's my bias leaking, I apologize. For those of you who disagree, no I don't, sorry not sorry, they're the best. So, you just can't beat them. And if you can't beat them, you join them. And if you can't join them, then you stress eat. So that's just, that's just how you do it. Okay, so Samuel's levels are getting out of control. There was one point when Samuel was actually falling behind a bit, so I'm kind of impressed that things have gotten so high. But I just, I don't know, I don't really have a lot of moves that are effective. That's why I try to have the type diversity on the team, but also the move diversity when I play. Because I want to swap the team around and, you know, be in fighting shape no matter what I do. I couldn't care less if I don't have all the moves, but I just want to have... It's not quite as fun when I'm just using stuff that's not, that's not as effective. I mean, you just got to do what you got to do. People are watching this episode and be like, man, he sure is complaining a lot. But I'm also talking about things I love, so you can't be too mad at me. You cannot be too mad. I won't allow it. Okay, so I forgot. This is not gonna work. I think we will use... Let's just use Scarlet. And even Scarlet, like, the stat spread is not super indicative of moves that are great. Like, it is a little tough at this juncture, especially considering... Oh, is... Giraffer? I don't even I don't even know what Giraffarig's type is anymore. Is it a psychic type? I think Giraffarig was a Was it a gold and silver? I want to say a gold and silver Pokemon. If not gold and silver, then it was Ruby and Sapphire. So it was one of those. But I would say, gun to my head, I'm gonna say gold and silver. Because I do remember there's a beta sprite. Here we go. So it is gold and silver. I remember the Giraffarig beta sprite, its front and its back half were identical, like horses or giraffe. I mean, I'm assuming it's a giraffe. That was stupid. So it's definitely a giraffe. But I remember its front and its back being identical, aside from one being kind of like the dark side and then the other one being kind of the the higher or the lighter colored one. So that's pretty neat. Okay, so we will be able to grab some berries, grab a little snake before we head along to Celestic Town. Who doesn't love that? Keep a nice a nice amount of berries in your sack while you're traveling around. Good for your energy. Maybe a nice granola bar. Whatever you're into. Maybe some aguav berries. That's a weird name. A lot of these berries are basically just poffin feed, and I'm not going to use those at all. So here we go. Route 210. Next time, we'll head into Celestic Town. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I will see you next time. Bye.